everyone. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Stout, founder and CEO of Vinco Bar Exam Coaching. And we are continuing on with our series of interviewing some of our students who were recently successful in passing the bar exam. Yay! And today we are being joined by Gil, who I'm going to try not to be biased, but Gil was one of my students, so I am very extra excited for him and very happy to be chatting with him today. Um, and he's going to be telling us a little bit about his bar prep experience and a little bit about his experience working with Bingo. So welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I'm a bar passer, so I'm definitely happy. Who's like... <laughs> already getting ready to get admitted, like sending everything out five seconds after. Exactly. I, like, I like your style. So we'll jump straight in with the questions. And my first question is about when you first decided that you wanted to get some extra help with bar prep, whether it was a coach or a tutor or some other thing, what were you looking for? Like what was important to you in that decision-making process? Um, I think, uh, I'd probably say um, someone who would hold me accountable, of course. Um, also, a, a, a plan, like a, an, uh, a schedule that kind of that I could follow throughout the, you know, bar prep process. So I think the schedule and someone who was there, um, you know, and had the lines of communication open so that we could, you know, kind of communicate throughout the process. And, you know, also mot someone who could help motivate me, too. And I think that piece is important, too. So you, it sounds like you're saying like you were really looking for someone who would be like with you through the process. So it wasn't just about like getting a plan and then giving you that plan. It was about working through that plan with you yes. throughout bar prep. Um, and sort of on that same note, I get asked all the time, like, what exactly is bar coaching? <laughs> like that's not, I feel like I sort of made up the concept when I started Vinco, but you know, we're not tutors and that's front and center on our website. And it's, it's one of the first things I say to students on con consults, like that we're not tutors, we're coaches. Um, but somehow I still can't seem to get my definition really straight. And I find it's helpful hearing from students to kind of talk a little bit about how they viewed that coaching relationship and like what that really meant to them, like their expectations of their coach and how that played out. So would you talk to that for a minute or two? Yeah, sure. I think um, the coaching aspect has to do with um, kind of the motivational side of what I was, was talking about. But, you know, with Vinco, you guys really um, emphasize the mindset piece of it, which goes outside of just, um, you know, studying doing mbe mbes and essays is the you know that piece of trying to get to the heart of what what it is that makes you happy what it is that is a distraction for you how can we you know minimize the distractions how can we create time for you to be able to you know also have a life right and have that balance and for me i think that coaching aspect of it i used to always say like you know you not to make it just about you but you're tough like a mom, but cool like a friend, you know? So I think that balance is, is really And then good. I promptly stole that and put it on our website. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing that anyone has ever said about me. Tough yeah. like a mom, cool like a friend. Um, but it does apply to all the coaches, honestly. Like tough right. like mom or dad, you know, Steve, Steve's a tough bar dad. Um, but we, we do try to strike that balance of helping our students to stay accountable, I would say you have to be a little scared of us or we're not going to be effective, but you can't be so scared of us that you don't want to tell us things because right. then we can't help you. So um, I think that kind of nicely summarizes that, that coaching aspect of it. Um, and so this time that you passed the bar exam was, was not your first time taking the bar. Yeah. And I think it's really helpful for students to hear about like what made the difference like on on the time that you passed and um i know you probably have more than one thing to say so i'll i'll allow it tell tell as many things as you think need to okay. be said but what are like the key like the most important things that you think um changes that you made that made the difference this time around um i first i took the bars in four four times um and passed it this fourth time um i was um extremely close um the first time um, the second time, I was a bit off. I, I think the first time I was off by about five points, then by 10 points. The third time, I missed it by three points. Um, and this time, obviously, I passed. But Crushed it. He crushed it. Go on. Right. He crushed it. And <laughs> honestly, uh, one thing I could say is that 
the program and doing the MBEs, my MBE score shot up completely. Um, so the 3,000 questions is gold. Um, also, I think this, this last time, my focus on the essays and really not, not just, um, you know, doing an essay and, um, you know, going through the answer, but like really getting to the heart of or overcoming that anxiety that I had in terms of like getting to an essay where, Hey, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> the rule or, and, and using the method of, you know, ma making up the rule. And I just felt like I was a lot more equipped to handle the things about the test that gave me anxiety. And I think the anxiety a lot of times causes, you know, like let's say, in, for instance, if you were to encounter your first essay and it was something you didn't know, it yeah. would throw you, th me personally, it would throw me off going into the rest of the essays, even if I knew, you know, even if I knew the, the substantive, you know, aspects of the other essays. Which so you did, right? Like right. You, you were prepared to take right. the test substantively. What exactly. do you think I would say was your biggest, like the biggest obstacle you overcame this time? If I had to pick one thing, I'm I'm curious if you know. I'll tell you. But what would you uh, think? Um, I'm gonna say mindset. Yes, but I'm mindset. gonna say mindset. <laughs> yes, because I, I would say one thing though. In even in the last three times, um, I don't believe that I knew much more of the law any time. You know, like I feel like. Time. like yeah, my level of knowledge of the law and all of that was pretty much the same all three times. Yep. And the difference was my my mindset in terms of like when it was time to study, it wasn't, oh man, I have to go do this. It was more so, okay, what can we do today? What can we get done today? Um, you know, what did I learn today? What can we fix today? It, it was more solution based as opposed to looking at it as a prop like this big problem or this big cloud over yeah. my life and uh, you know. I just can't under like I can't underemphasize the importance of that and people like look at me like I'm insane when I say that people fail the bar exam who are completely prepared to take it because of mindset issues yes. and some people just stay there and that is the obstacle they can't get past it and to very much to your credit you did a lot of work focusing on that this administration you didn't just bury it deep and say that crazy lady is telling me those crazy things again um, and that that sometimes like i in some ways think that's harder than anything else about bar prep so like that's really to your credit that you didn't shy away from that challenging piece of it and you you dug into it and now here we are celebrating yeah. our faces off because you passed the bar exam. Um, and so, you know, on that note, transitioning to the next question, um, what if somebody is like, hey man, you passed the bar exam, congratulations. Now tell me how I can pass the bar exam. What is one or two pieces of advice that you would give someone like, you must do this? Um, definitely do 3000 questions. Um, MBE you, is what you say. Probably. Yeah, uh, MBE sure. questions, right. Um, do a lot of essays, but make sure you're, you're you're not strengthening your strengths, if that makes sense. Like, don't just work on the subject areas that you're strong at. Don't don't be if, don't be afraid of, you know, if you take if you do an essay um, and you don't finish in time or you didn't know the rule. Okay, look at the answer and then do it again. Put the timer on and do it again. You have to face that. You have to face that fear and break that anxiety so that the thing that makes you uncomfortable or throws you off becomes something that you actually look forward to. Because that was the issue for me with the MBEs. And then I felt like I got to a point, maybe not mastery, but I got good at it, right? I don't know, man. I might call it mastery. You really, <laughs> you really got that MBEs, MBEs grow up far above passing. So right. yeah, but that was the question, the amount of questions. Right. right. So doing that, and then also, like I said, I, I keep saying the mindset part, but I think you have, and this was something that, you know, my coach um, told me was that you have to take the power. Um, you have to take the power back from the exam, especially as people who are repeat takers. I think that's the hardest part because you feel like this is happening to you and it becomes this whole why me instead of you reclaiming that power and saying, OK, this is a test. But I, I got to this point. I'm going to conquer this test. And you know, nothing is going to stop me. And when I see something I don't know, I'm not going to get, you know, flustered or rattled. I'm going to just push through 
and use my you know fundamentals and my skills that I've learned and execute. Um, it's I, I just I keep saying it, but mindset just be positive. Like talk to yourself. I mean, it sounds crazy, but talk to yourself. Journal. I journal. Going down the rabbit hole here, man. But yeah, the, those yeah. are suggestions, right? Journal, yeah. talking to yourself, post-it notes, right? Like reading like certain books. Or right. I read like, I read self-help books, motivational books. <laughs> it's on it. You but know, like, that's hard. Like that is object, like objectively a more difficult amount of work than memorizing some law. Oh sure. yeah. For sure. And like, I want to go on the record and say like, this is not a unique problem, but your way of approaching it and actually tackling it is unique in that most people can't acknowledge it and can't attack it. And like, that's what makes the difference for you being able to be here. Um, and so my last question, which is like, always self-serving but extra self-serving because I was your actual coach is what was like what was one or two of your favorite things about working with Thinko because the whole point of these videos is a to like celebrate with you guys but b to let people know a little bit more about what they can expect when working with us um the the community also the I, I find there to be like a, just a positive energy um around um the, the the working with the coaches and working with you know my coach right but um that even if even if i was a bit down i looked forward to the to the to the meetings and the meetings i would always i always left the meetings feeling like uh, motivated and really like okay i can do this and especially at times when you know i might have been down and then also i think that accountability piece that, you know, tough like a mom, cool like a friend, like you don't want to let, you don't want to, you build a relationship with your coach and you don't want to let your coach down the same way you don't want to let yourself down. So that, yeah. that second piece, a lot of times your coach can be like a mirror for you in terms of getting you to see your weaknesses, see, okay, Hey, I'm slacking this week. I need to get, get on the ball or, Hey, that's a really good point. Um, I, I say this a lot as like the easiest person in the world to disappoint is yourself. Right. And it's like, we're, we're coaches over here. Right. So we're kind of really good at being organized and on top of things, I still need to tell somebody else, like when I have my own goals, because right. it's like, Oh, if, well, if nobody knows, I can just rearrange that. Right. And it's no big deal. You don't pay for yourself. You can justify it. You can right. justify it. Not when I'm going to be sitting there being like, Hey, right. where's, Where's those MBE questions? Right, where are the MBEs exactly? And so uh, that that piece of so that relationship, you know, is just important. And I think, um, it, it, I couldn't. I I recommend it to just anybody. Like, I, go with Vinko. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in all honesty, the pleasure was all mine. And <laughs> thank you so much for taking. Oh, can't take me anywhere. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today and uh, talk about your experience. Um, for those of you out there who are interested in learning more about Vinco, you can find us at vincoprep.com and I will see you next time.